Hey Associates, this video right along is that speed build of me creating the usability report uh, example. I did mine on Spotify for podcasters and their platforms. Um, and so I will be like cutting this up um, a lot just because uh, all of the like various multiple raw recordings I made were like two hours each. You know, this is a big project. I did do it in not 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 one sitting because you know there's so many stages to it but uh i did rock through it in multiple about like two hour sessions um and so i will be jumping around a lot but to start out uh you know i got my data both from testing on uh, some participants and filling out the first part of the scorecard and then going through and doing that assessment myself which is you know, just what I am working on here and so again that took you know like an hour or so really going through and trying to document all these aspects and and doing the kind of user assessment um, using one of the usability frameworks uh, the kind of more cognitive assessment uh, to get that initial kind of data, taking all sorts of notes. Uh, all right, so now let's go ahead and transition and I'm hopping into on a different day, different session, uh, filling out more of my document itself. I had, you know, the methods written already, which I did not record. Um, so I obviously had to write the methods in order to perform, conduct the study. So the method section really should be the first, one of the first sections that you really write and that it is fully complete um, because you need to know your methods in order to execute, right, on your methods, uh, finish your plan. Uh, so I'm just going through and updating things like the headings I uh, did decide to you know add uh, I realized I should probably have a additional little background information section um, about Riverside and so that's what I'm adding in here on this platform background just to really round out and finish uh, my method section so I am you know just pulling up that app the product that I tested looking for there you know about me kind of FAQ pages which is what I will then go ahead and cite in the information um, so that way I can just describe what is this new Riverside app um, here is where I'm using that reference manager. So definitely use right, the managed sources uh, to just keep track of everything for you. It makes it so much easier if you just enter your references in as you go. Uh, and so when I found right, this information, logged it as that website and then use that insert citation to go ahead and get in there. Uh, I realized that I wanted like a photo of, hey, Spotify is prompting me to go to this other website. Um, and so that's where I just took that screen capture, pasted it right into my document uh, with just some of that context. So either side of images, you know, provide that explanation kind of unpacking and description so that way people know what it is that they're looking at. I uh, never just kind of give them an image without describing the context uh, for them. Now I am adding the caption um, for my image right away. So again, use those reference tools, including the captions. I am changing my design here. I like to do it at the beginning, but we will, we will see at the very end, I changed my mind and decided I don't like this one. Um, and it does substantially kind of change the layout. So I did go ahead and update it to my personal kind of colors and font package uh, before going on. I already have some like past documents and work and resources that I had created um, that I just am kind of referencing back through like, oh yeah, that was a good reference. I should see the update there. Um, also, you know, work harder, not smarter. Uh, if you watched and looked at my examples for the tutorial, you know that I did the tutorial on how to use Spotify for podcaster. So I knew I already had some language. I'm not directly copying it over. Um, but I am reminding myself using it as that reference inspiration for what I already wrote, information I already found, and then rewriting it, restating it in you know different um, ways that align better with this document and the audience, obviously compared to the last one. Add a footnote with the references tab um, as this kind of side note of like, okay, well I am writing to the headquarters, but side note, you know, Spotify USA is a different sort of subsidiary partner. Um, 
that I kind of learned about and, and I'm just adding some more information about Spotify to that market analysis. Uh, all right, I'm going to kind of super speed up this next section. Um, there's not too much more to say. At this point, I'm just researching, adding to my reference list, writing that market analysis, and I will hop back on the mic uh, when I get into sort of big writing section two in my next area. All right, I'm back for writing session number two. Not, I just took a tiny break, so not too long after, afterwards. You can probably see in the time stamp in the corner, but now I am working on the findings. So I decided to take a break after I finished that market analysis. So now I could do my findings and to prep for that on my whiteboard and my notes, I kind of laid out all the things I wanted to talk about in the findings. And then on the screen, I do have open my different scorecards. Um, so all of my data right there. Uh, so that way it would make this session just like faster because I've already sort of pre thought about pre written what I was going to say and I just need to put the words down. Um, so I'm adding in those subsections for the different um, tests that I did. And so, you know, with that introduction to the main section, say, okay, I have two types of kind of data I'm reporting out. Here's how I'm gonna organize my results section. So it was right, a little intro explaining to the people that skipped right down there what's happening. Uh, then, you know, I, I do wanna have a graph and so I'm gonna need a, a spreadsheet for this rather than my Word document scorecard started in Excel, but then I was like, oh wait, no, I should just do it directly and native in Word and so we'll see um, me work on that next after I introduce this idea of speed and accuracy which is what I'm going to be representing in my column chart. Now I'm inserting the chart which opens kind of a miniature um, Excel sheet basically linked just directly to your Word chart so instead of building it in an actual full-on Excel sheet um, and like copy and pasting and linking things over uh, Word does have just a integrated sort of miniature version that you can use. Um, and so here I'm just, you know, putting in all the information instead of doing all these calculations myself, I'm just going to write a formula to give me the average of all of these kind of seconds for my testing data. And then I'm putting in that Riverside data directly. Then we can see right my chart kind of updated, giving it a clear title. Even though I do have the title and I will be writing a caption, still giving that descriptive kind of intro context uh, before people actually see the uh, chart, which is important both for people scanning around, give them that um, insight, but also important for people using screen readers, write about what is in your chart. So that way the screen reader picks it up and then you don't have to like write as much in your alt text description. Uh, now I'm doing another caption using the caption tools of writing the data story in my caption so it's not repeating the title. You can already see that. Now I'm actually making sure you pay attention to the data inside the point that uh, is most important to my analysis uh, so that way you know exactly what you are looking at. Um, all right, and uh, yeah, I'm just 
gonna be writing through so I'll sort of re speed up a lot of um, this work just so you can kind of watch me but there's not honestly that much to say right now I am just writing looking at my data results analyzing them writing it up noting any limitations uh, you see the highlight a lot of stuff those are kind of notes to self that I just want to go back and either edit or format or return to but right now I'm kind of in that free writing zone like let me just get all this content down um and then i will go back and do a lot of this editing stuff in sort of writing session stage three all right i'll see you when something interesting or important pops up trying to get this all wrapped up um, sort of in a day. Uh, so now I, I am going through, and in this session, gonna be focusing more on the proofing. I did finish um, kind of the, the main content. And I am using, I'm sort of kind of using my Grammarly AI to come up with a few sort of topics, ideas, um, and note that I'm basically rewriting almost everything that it produces uh, because that is the nature of using the intern. Good kind of ideas, inspiration when I hit writing block, but then I'm almost always like, yeah, but you know, I don't want to say it that way. And that makes sense because they right, are not you. They don't know your voice. They don't know exactly what you want to say. Uh, so always a great tool, but it's just that a tool that you started, then implement actually what are you saying. And I'm going through my styles tabs, updating um, the different elements that I want people to easily right, scan across, skip, scan, skim um, information for. Uh, in this section, I decided to do a flow chart, kind of a little diagram um, to show how the user experience on the Riverside app actually adds steps and diverges out of the main workflow, which I describe in words, but you know, visuals, diagrams really help emphasize the words that we're saying. So I am using the kind of native to word integrated, just little diagram tools, since it is honestly such a simple one. Definitely could have used Visio or even Canva to produce a diagram and then pasted it in as an image. Um, but it was so simple. I only had a few boxes, few stages that I wanted to show. It was ultimately just gonna be faster. Not not quite as pretty, not quite as pristine and nice, absolutely. Um, especially at stage, I was like, this is gonna be fine. <laughs> uh, like this is fine. So I'm just adding in those little boxes and playing around with some of the formatting tools, getting it not to look a little bit better, um, but I definitely do say kind of good enough. Uh, which is why I don't recommend writing your whole report in essentially one sitting because it's much easier to say nah, good enough instead of you know kind of holding yourself a little bit more accountable. I listen, I completely understand, I get it, but try to avoid doing that by breaking it up over multiple days so you're a little bit more fresh and detail oriented the whole time. Um, and we do right, removing the places that I highlighted, right? I'd given myself those notes of like, hey, come back and do something here. And so that's what I was cleaning up, making sure all of my visuals, images have captions on them. So that when people inher inherently and always sort of skip to look at the pretty picture, they have a caption of what is going on in that picture. Uh, and it's kind of scrolling back through a lot of this content. Um, and my kind of eye and role in this session is making it a more enjoyable, easier to understand reading experience. So kind of that raw information is just lots of paragraphs. Now I'm making it like better to process. I'm also expanding on my introduction um, with kind of that lead into podcasting as that biggest picture topic and then moving it down. Uh, here I like a site. I, did some stuff that I know because my whole dissertation was on podcasting culture. So I am just dropping in the citation for myself um, just to back up the stuff that I wrote in my intro because 
yeah, like I did my old dissertation research on that. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna drop my citation. Why not? Um, just about, you know, the power and the, the stuff of podcasts that I had researched and documented in that document. Um, and so as you write an introduction, think about it, first paragraph, highest level, big picture, what is your topic? In my case, big picture podcasting. Moving down into podcasting for education and the platform, then moving into the purpose of my document and providing that roadmap. Uh, I just went ahead and inserted my table of contents, wasn't really feeling how its alignment worked out, and so we'll see me change the design completely later on, uh, and having Grammarly actually write my abstract for me, um, a super helpful tool. Whenever they just need to summarize a document, they are extremely optimized for that. But notice how much I am cutting out, rewriting, getting rid of, uh, because it it's just never gonna say exactly what you wanted to say and it's never going to be as detailed as your brain the author who wrote the thing is going to be able to do uh, but again definitely much better than starting on a blank page and they are pretty good at summarizing um okay so now i need to, to look up the pod the spotify addresses and stuff again so i could uh, address my letter to them so just grabbing that information um, and then adding my information after doing a little bit of formatting on it so that way it meets the standards of a formal letter and here i'm going to grab my um spot my a grammarly assistant and i just asked it to write a cover letter for this document and it reads across everything else i've written and creates a summary uh, that does a pretty good job and they'll notice i am deleting a lot of what it wrote i am completely editing you know what it wrote moving things around and it ultimately i find that i end up cutting like boom i just cut that whole entire paragraph and rewrote it out because it just wasn't actually what i wanted to say um sometimes at least from my experience it's just so much easier for me to get my actual ideas out if i can um see inspiration realize what i don't want to say and it helps me understand what i do want to say um but some of this you know does stay in there and so use it as that tool just to kind of um help you out uh as you are uh, getting used to writing it's it's definitely a great tool that does save quite a bit of time um so it's more about kind of mastering that so try it and then really go through and change update edit everything that you need all right, so now I am just kind of scrolling back through and doing something on my captions. Uh, it's called a hidden break, which basically is going to tell my um, list of figures I only want this amount of text like showing up. So it kind of breaks up the caption, even though visually it looks like it's all the same caption, doing control, alt, enter where you want that break to occur. Then as you see, my list of figures now updates. So that way it's just what's happening before the hidden break um, instead of having my whole long giant caption. So it's a good way to clean that up. I'm going through and adding my page number. So I added section breaks to all the different sections, telling it, you know, do not link onto the prior section. I want this formatted differently. So that way I can get the Roman numerals on the front matter. Um, I have no, nothing on my opening pages. They're their own section. And I have a section starting with the front matter so I can Roman numeral it. And now regular ones as I go in. Uh, I just, you know, saved, closed out because it's getting a little bit buggy. And now we're getting into the final editor, editing stages. Use your tools, but also don't just blade like randomly and just blindly say yes, accept all. Uh, Cause there's lots of moments where I'm like, no, ignore that, ignore that. like you're wrong. I don't, I don't want it to do that. It is just trying to follow basic rules and doesn't understand in the full breadth of context, voice, expression. Um, but a lot of stuff is good to accept. So use the tools to clean up your work. Um, I definitely prefer Grammarly to the built-in editor, um, but you will find the ones that you like best. And it's just important to especially hit spell check and just make sure um, everything, you don't, you don't have too many mistypes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, style and the way you want to say something is of course more open to your um, desires, voice and interpretation as writers in this situation. Uh, all right, so I basically just go through and accept a bunch of edits. So I'll kind of 
we may speed up or like skip this section um, and then we will wrap up this right along with the final stages. into my conclusion just rereading all my stuff updating style font kind of stuff um and this is where i decided you know what i do not like the initial design i had i didn't think the headings and subheadings were distinct enough um but we see it like did adjust my page number so this way it is good to kind of decide your design before you get too far um because it will bump stuff but I opted for this one that I just felt like had much better clarity between what was a main heading and a subheading. I just think this one is the easiest to skip, scan, skim because there's the most kind of contrast and distinction across the different parts. I like to add just a very, very, very light, subtle effect on images, just that very subtle shadow. Um, and here I didn't like how that page was set up. And so you're just doing some adjustments to spacing. Um, Hopping in, I forgot to do alt text on every single thing. The accessibility checker warned me and reminded me about that. So now I'm doing my alt text, which is just right, short, simple descriptions of what the photo is for the screen reader. So I'm like saying this is a screenshot of you know the riverside showing where to view recordings, blah 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 blah. Um, so it's not, you know, a rehashing of the content that's already going to be read by the screen reader. It is added just description of visually what um, is getting picked up. Now, it gave me this warning that all the font was too light, which is a problem with the, the UCCS um, version. Like the gold and the white doesn't have a super strong contrast. So here I'm just going through um, modifying all of my styles to be this dark blue or black instead of the gold, uh, just to ensure that contrast is it's really good. So that accessibility checking tool literally gives you a super easy pathway um, to figure all of that out. Saving my PDF and I am done after a little bit of a marathon writing session with my usability report. All right. Thanks associates. Bye.